In this tutorial, we're going to check out the new widgets inside of Elementor Pro 3.5. This is the beta version we're looking at, so these features are not ready for production sites, but you can see what's coming down the pipe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. Now let's get started. As of today, we have access to Elementor Pro version 3.5 beta with some new features, including a major focus on WooCommerce. We have a new checkout widget, a new cart widget, a My Account widget, you can set WooCommerce pages inside the site settings inside of Elementor now. There's a progress tracker widget, which is not WooCommerce related. And there's a scroll snap widget, also not WooCommerce related. There's global widget engine improvements and security enforcements, which I think is also synonymous with security improvements. And just to reiterate, this is for Elementor Pro. The free version of Elementor is not going to be featured in this video. You do need it to run Elementor Pro, but no new features for Elementor Free are in this video. So if we go into a page with Elementor Pro Beta installed, if you want to install the beta version to see this for yourself, there's a tutorial on the card up above and the description down below to show you how to install Elementor Beta versions. Pretty straightforward, just one setting, tweak, and then you can install them. So if we search over here for checkout, we have a checkout widget. And this looks like the WooCommerce checkout. Anybody who's used WooCommerce has seen this before, but now we can edit everything to do with this checkout inside of WooCommerce with all the WooCommerce bells and whistles that we're used to for editing pretty much anything. First of all, we can change the layout from two columns to one column. We can make the right column sticky so it follows us down the page if the left column is too large. We can change the billing details, which is this section right in here. You can change the title. You can even make it dynamic. You can change the alignment. Each form field allows you to change the label, which is this piece of text right here, and the placeholder, which is the text inside of the field. You can also add a default value, which looks the same as a placeholder, but it's not. If I type in the word hello, we see hello now becomes the placeholder. But this is also the value for the field. So if you have a placeholder, and say this company name field here is optional, it's not required, so we don't have to fill it out. And if I submit this form without filling it out, company name is not going to be transmitted along with the form data. However, if there's a default value on that field, that default value will be transmitted with the data. It'll be as though the field was filled in when it wasn't actually filled in. And this can also be dynamically filled as well. There are use cases where you might want to do that, auto-filling stuff for your customers to make their checkout experience easier. Other than that, I'm not sure what else you'd use that for in terms of WooCommerce forms, but it's there as an option. And so all the billing details fields have the same options. Shipping details have similar options. Change the title. The first and last name you can edit. Company name as well. Country, region, address, town, city, state, and postal code cannot be changed because you need those to be able to ship something. So that makes sense. Additional information down below here. This section right here, you can change the title. You can also make it go away. Your order, which is up here on the right, because we're on a two column layout. If we're on a one column layout, this would be down below. They'd be all stacked on top of each other. Change the title, change the alignment. For coupons, you can change the title. You can change the link text. Click here to enter coupon. You can change that text right there. For payment, you can change the message. You can change the link. And for the purchase button, we can change the alignment, and that's it for right here. Under the style section, we can customize the button further. We can update the styles for all the sections in true Elementor fashion. Let's just quickly do something that's pretty common on forms, but it's hard to do out of the box if you don't have easy stuff like this, like Elementor. So if we go to forms, let's go to the fields. Let's change the background to be not a picture, but to be a color. Let's make the background get pink. Maybe that's a brand color for you. And focus is what the color will change to and the font and everything will change to when someone clicks into that field. So we can change the color to a light blue. We're going to change the font family to something more interesting. Now if we click into the form field, we see the colors change. That's pretty cool. So that's normal versus focus. Normal is what you see here. Focus is what you see when you click into the field. 
And there's all kinds of options to adjust pretty much everything on this Checo form, which hasn't really been easy to do before third-party plugins enabled it and before Elementor is now doing it. If you're doing this manually with WooCommerce, you'd be having to do CSS to make all this stuff work. So there's a lot of options in here. I'm not going to go through every single setting because I know you can read, I know you know how to experiment, and I know you know if something goes wrong in Elementor, it's pretty easy to undo it. And the customize section here is pretty neat. You can select specific sections of the order form, or sorry, the checkout page, to change. So let's go to additional information. Let's scroll down to where that is. This is it right here, this little box. Choosing that under customize, adds customize, colon, additional information. Now we can change the background color of this section to make it really stand out. Let's make it black. And let's give it a, a dash border. I think a purple dash border is the way to go. Like that. This really stands out. So by customizing sections specifically, you can draw your user's attention to something that you want them to see. Something you don't want them to miss when they're going through your checkout process. So those are the options for the checkout widget. Let's check out the cart widget. It's not this WordPress cart. It's not the custom add to cart. It is just the plain old cart. And here's our cart. I've already added some items from the shop on this website. And we can customize this just as we did the checkout page. We can have one column or two column. We can have the right side column here sticky. We can change the name of the update cart button right here. We can even make that button go away. Under additional options, we can turn off the update cart button. And now when someone updates anything in these fields, it'll be updated instantly on the page. So if I change this to two, it's not gonna work in here because we're inside of Elementor. But when we publish this, when I change that to two and then tab out of that field, it's gonna be $10 for the subtotal. Whereas normally, we have an update cart button, you have to update the amount, click on update cart, and then it will change. And because this is in beta, right now there appears to be a little bit of a bug. If I click on update cart now, the widget is gonna go away. And then if I delete the widget and put it back in, we have our amount updated. This is a beta release, so there's still bugs to be worked out. But getting rid of that update cart button is pretty cool. We can change the coupon text. We can change the totals text. Under style, we have all the styling options we had before. We can also customize specific sections here that aren't listed up above. So we have the sections. So each individual box on the cart page is a section. Typography options. You can change the style for all the form fields, the order summary, the totals, the checkout button itself. You can change everything to be styled just like your checkout page. And you can make sure both of these pages are styled just like the rest of your website. So it's one congruent flow. WooCommerce historically has always been in a bit of a world of its own. You'd have a specific theme that you'd create and customize and make look just perfect for your brand. And then WooCommerce was usually pretty close to that. If you hired someone or if you know what you're doing, you could customize it pretty close to what your brand image was for the rest of your site, but it still wouldn't be perfect. And then third-party add-ons came along for WooCommerce and you could customize your cart page and checkout page and all the WooCommerce pages to be pretty much exactly like the rest of your website, which was great. And now it's even easier now this is coming to Elementor Pro. So that's the cart page that we can customize. And we can also customize the My Account page. There's a new widget for that. And all these things are outlined on this release page right here on GitHub. So if you want to check this out, this is in the description down below. There's a link to it so you can read through here. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. The My Account page, you can have these links vertical, which is the default, or you can make them horizontal, which is not commonly seen. But you can do it like that. You can change the spacing and you can customize the names for each of those links. Just click on these tabs. Maybe orders is the wrong word. Maybe purchases is what you want for your my account page for your customers. And now you can make all this congruent with the rest of your website as well because the style options are just as thorough as they were for the checkout page and the cart page. We can customize each of the tabs, typography, borders, colors, backgrounds, dividers, 
each of the sections, typography, forms, order details. You can customize pretty much anything you need to to make it just right. There's one last thing that's been added for WooCommerce functionality inside of Elementor. If we click on the hamburger icon up here and go to site settings, we now have the ability to go to this WooCommerce section and select pages for WooCommerce right inside of Elementor. If you're familiar with WooCommerce, you know inside the WooCommerce settings, you can choose these pages. If you're creating a new checkout page, for example, you can save that checkout page by clicking update and then you can find that checkout page here. This post is called Elementor Beta, so maybe this is the checkout page, this is an example. Then you click on update again, and that will be now updated as your new checkout page. You can do it all right inside of Elementor. And this also updates the settings inside of WooCommerce, so they're synced. Let's go back out of here, discard changes. So those are the big updates for WooCommerce, but there are some other updates as well. The next thing we'll look at is the progress tracker. For that, we're gonna leave this page here and we're going to go to a blog post template page which is something you need Elementor Pro to create under Elementor templates go to theme builder We've got a blog post template right here I'm going to click on edit with Elementor if you want to know how to make a blog post template I've got a tutorial dedicated to that in the card above and the description down below it also explains why you need blog post templates if you're not sure what they are and so the way templates work is Every single blog post on our site is going to be pulled into this template design when someone views it on the front end. And that means everything we add to this template design is going to be added to every blog post on the front end. So we can update all of our blog posts all at once with design changes, which makes life a lot easier. And we are going to add a new section right up here. I'm going to look up progress and progress tracker is the widget we want. Drag and drop that in there. You probably want to have it in a different section because you want to make it sticky so it follows people down the page. I'm going to click on the six dots for the section, go to advanced, go to motion effects and choose sticky. I'm going to put it on the top. So as we scroll, we see the progress bar is showing our reading progress till we get down to the very bottom. I could save this right now and this would appear on all the blog posts on the website because this is a blog post template but there's more settings. You can make the progress bar circular. This one might be nice if it appears in the bottom right corner, something like that. The horizontal one I think is nicer at the top of the page. You can have the progress relative to the entire page or to the post content or to a specific selector which we have to define. So maybe you have an image right here and you give it a specific class or an ID, then the progress bar will track its progress from the top of the page to that image. You can also choose the direction of the progress. Let's change this back to entire post. And we see it's now coming from the right and going left. And we can have it going left to right. We can also show a percentage, which is pretty slick. And if you don't like the look of this, which I don't, you can change the style. You can change pretty much everything you need to to make this look exactly how you want. Under tracker, you can change the progress indicator. Let's change the color to be red. Let's make it a gradient, actually. Let's make it something new age like you see a lot these days. Uh, let's change the angle, something like that. That looks pretty slick. You can give the progress tracker a different color on the right here if you don't like it under the tracker background settings. You can give the whole thing a box shadow. You can change the content, which is the percentage. Whoops, the percentage. You can change its color, typography, text shadow, things like that. And if we change this to circular, you're going to want a background color behind your circular progress tracker because this is really hard to see. And there's no setting for that inside the tracker settings. So you have to go to places like the column. And let's give the column background color. Let's just make it white. And now we have a white background. That's a pretty big area at the top of the page. Luckily, we can shrink our tracker. I'm going to make it at least big enough so you can fit the text in there. But we can shrink that too. Make it teeny tiny if 
we want to. And we could also make it big. And when it's big, these other settings make more sense. You can change the width of the progress tracker. You can change the width of the background. So it can look like this if you want, like a ring instead of a donut. A lot of different settings you can do. But I find the circular one a little more invasive because it takes up so much more real estate on the screen, especially on mobile. So I actually prefer to use the horizontal. It's the one you see most commonly. And I think it looks quite nice. And the width of this, I do not think you can change that. Track the background. Oh, yeah, there you go. You can change the height. So you can make it nice and skinny if you want and it doesn't take up too much screen real estate. So that's the progress tracker. There's one more big thing added to Elementor 3.5 beta, and that is a scroll snap. And to see the scroll snap, we have to exit out of Elementor, and we have to turn on an experiment. So it's in 3.5 beta, but within 3.5 beta, it is an experiment. So to turn on the experiments, we go to Elementor and Settings, I believe, and Experiments tab over here. And then scroll snap should be somewhere on this list. There it is at the bottom. Let's turn that on. Let's save changes. And now if I go to a page, we're using this one for this example right here. This is a regular old Elementor template. The page has to have some length for the scroll snap to work. And this is the page we're going to try this on. Let's go to edit with Elementor. And now if I go to the page settings, click in the gear in the bottom and then go to advanced we have a scroll snap option let's turn that on let's make the position the top and the scroll padding let's make it 30 and the scroll snap stop always not quite sure what these do yet we're gonna find out right now I have an idea but I'm not quite sure so now if I scroll I'm, it's hard to explain because you can't see me scrolling. But I'm just, on my trackpad, I'm going down a little bit, and then the website is scrolling the rest of the way for me. And it scrolls to this section. When I go up, it scrolls to the next section automatically. So instead of constantly moving my fingers down the, down the trackpad or on the mouse to scroll a page, you can scroll section by section. And the 30 pixels of padding that I chose is how much space there is above. So the section is this white area, but you see we're not right on it. And that spacing is the padding. And the snap position is currently at the top. You can also have it center or bottom, which means the section will be either centered or bottomed. If it's a section that's bigger than the screen, it would make a lot of sense to go into the center or the bottom. I feel like the top is almost always the section area you want to go to. And again, it's hard to explain, but I'm just touching my trackpad a little bit and it's scrolling for me to the next section. It's something you have to experience to really understand what I'm saying. But this is a new widget in Elementor 3.5. And the last two things, the global widget engine improvements and security enforcements are not that exciting. Feel free to come to this page and have a read through. This is them right here makes overall Elementor use better and more secure, but it's not super exciting. And if you don't have Elementor Pro yet, you can purchase it through a link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link, so if you end up buying through that link, I do get a commission for that, and it does not cost you more to buy it through my link. It's just that I get a commission from Elementor, and that helps me keep making these videos for you on YouTube. So if you do buy through there, I really appreciate it. If you want to try out Elementor Beta, this tutorial right here will help you set that up. And this tutorial down below it is going to help you speed up your Elementor site beyond what you think is possible. So check out both of those videos, whichever one you prefer. And make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Alpass in WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.